Hello my friends, welcome back to the Motion channel and this week we are going to create a sponge squish with foam effect. This effect is for intermediate users of Houdini, so if you have like an intermediate kind of knowledge with Houdini, you will be able to follow along easily with this tutorial because I'm not going over like all the notes. I don't want to make this uh, video too long and boring. So I'm going to show you the whole structure and uh, what is where. So if you want to tweak the file, which is in the description for free, uh, you can do it. So I'm about to run my Patreon. So yay for that. And I, I don't want to rush it. So for this uh, effect, I, I'm still gonna put it into the Gumroad. But uh, for sure next week, I'm gonna run the Patreon for those who are more comfortable with Patreon. They, they can get the file from there as well. So um, let's jump into Houdini and create this effect together. All right, so we are starting uh, by bringing a hand animation. So this one, as you can see, um, it's a really basic kind of squish hand, which I downloaded from uh, Sketchfab, Elena FF did this work and uploaded it five years ago. So, oh my God, 2020 is five years ago. Time flies. So I, don't, I just downloaded this one, which I'm gonna put it uh, in the file. It was for free, so I, I think that would be okay with Elena. So we load this file here and then I'm getting the bones and I'm blasting the thumb so uh, I could uh, retime just the thumb uh, animation. So if you see here, uh, the thumb is kind of fast. It goes first and then the other fingers will join. So I want to um, tweak that and make it as the whole hand will just do it this. And even thumb is really slow. So it comes last. That's what I'm doing here with this time shift. And uh, I'm actually making the other fingers even faster. So this is time shift fast and time shift slow, which are doing the trick. Then I'm smoothing and putting into a different place. So this is our hand. It's already ready for the first simulation and of course other simulations. So for the sponge, I'm making a box after the poly bevel to make the edges a bit uh, smooth. I'm doing a rematch. So this is the whole uh, geometry of the uh, sponge. Then I'm doing like some measures to get a bit of curvature uh, for texturing purposes, which I didn't really use. I mean, in the final uh, render, you don't even notice it, but it's there. So we can uh, have that uh, data. Maybe you can uh, put this data for subsurface scattering to have more subsurface uh, on the edges. But anyway, after this, uh, we have our material for the first simulation. So uh, this is the parameters of the first simulation, which is basically the sponge uh, itself. And um, so these are the parameters. And here I'm bringing the hand as a collider and it's a animated deforming uh, collider type. So after you run this simulation, which uh, as you can see, there's not that much point here because I don't want to mesh these points. I'm going to show you what I will do with these. Uh, after you run this simulation, you're going to have something like this. So really easy kind of squish. And uh, so what we are doing here, I'm going to put a UV, by the way, for the sponge here. So here after the simulation, I'm not um, meshing those particles uh, into polygons like the way we used to do like with VDB from particles and then meshing them so what I'm doing here is to deform uh, this mesh based on these points so with the point deform you see that very easily and fast we can deform the initial geometry that we did this uh, NPM solver with and we get crazy good results I mean this is this is awesome so we have a smooth to make things uh, a bit smoother here. And this is the sponge effects, already done. So if you don't want the foam, you can just uh, click out of this video. I know I'm, I'm joking, just to say to the end. 
and please subscribe and like this video to support me i'm really grateful and thankful for the 200 people that already subscribed to this channel it's more than i could imagine yeah i'm really grateful that you guys are here all right so let's move on what are these uh transform nodes so as you can see uh after i've done the simulation i'm starting with a sponge in the center so here but the hand grabs it and pulls it down so you see it's going down and i didn't want to like animate my camera to make the sponge uh the center so i decided to do this with a transform node and i just animated uh this sponge to stay in the center and this is basically uh, me faking the movement here and i do apply the same thing for the hand so if i show you the final result so these uh final uh, null nodes with the red box around them are the ones that i'm using in the render so this is the final effect and they are uh, intact and at the center with some cheating so here you go the sponge effect is done now we are going for the final boss which is the foam that um took me so long to actually come up with an idea how to create this foam because it was a like really complicated kind of simulation. It wasn't just the foam itself. I tried uh, grain particles, grain vellum. I tried flip simulation. And at the end, it was our beloved MPM solver who did the job and it was perfect. So let me show you what was the process. So here I'm getting the simulation data out of the previous uh, MPM solver and applying the same uh, fake transform here and I'm just deleting everything except the V ID and J E uh, which is kind of a pressure attribute so uh, I don't know why uh, it's called J E maybe someone could tell me in the comments but basically the data that it has is uh, the particles that are colliding and they're under pressure either they are um, getting a squished. So I'm using that data here. Then I'm uh, remapping this JE attribute. And then I'm uh, converting these particles into VDBs and into mesh. So I'm using that uh, JE attribute here to uh, get this kind of uh, color and then transferring this to our mesh so that we would have something like this and then i'm blurring that now this one is actually pretty cool effect you can use it i don't know maybe in something else but you see it's uh, kind of highlighting the areas that is being squished and under pressure so maybe you could use that one but here i'm just deleting whatever uh is black and keeping things uh, actually keeping the color data that is under uh point one and then I'm uh, extruding these mesh. So there is something messy like this. I don't want any extra attributes here. And I just put this into the NPM source. So here I'm applying a normal attribute on the points. And then with the wrangle, I'm just uh, turning that data into velocity. And I've put an amount uh, slider so I could uh, adjust this velocity later and then i transfer this data so you can see that now we have velocity on these uh, points okay cool for the collision of this simulation i'm just using the hand as it is i'm just cleaning the attributes and i'm bringing the sponge and with a peak node um just putting it a bit tiny kind of peak toward uh, itself so it would be a bit smaller now these are just small adjustments that gave me better results in the simulation so maybe if you are doing something else you wouldn't uh, necessarily need these again the collider is on uh, animated deforming and i'm starting the simulation on frame uh, 1044 this is basically where the sponge is starting to be squished by the way these are the parameters for the npm source so if you are curious uh, on what are the settings for the npm source these are the numbers. And as for uh, solver settings, I'm just canceling the gravity completely. So this is the uh, result after you run this simulation. 
you would have something like this. By the way, I'm uh, actually ending this simulation on frame, let's see, um, 1075 because I didn't want to emit more points after this frame. And uh, we can check this uh, result with other geometries to see how it is. Now, one thing I noticed uh, after running some renders was that these points just appear immediately. So the way that I faded uh, this kind of appearing uh, was that after this uh, point jitter to give some randomness to the position of the points, I uh, made this uh, attribute warp and inside what I'm basically doing is that I'm getting the age uh, attribute from the simulation and with a remap I'm multiplying the peer scale by this age value. If I crank up this number a bit, you can see a little better. Uh, when they are getting emitted, they're gonna be like zero at PSK, so you won't see anything. And as the simulation goes on and they get more age, the PSK will get to its maximum value. So that's exactly what I'm doing here. And I found uh, that uh, for source max on 0.1, it would be better results. Okay, so that's uh, a scale from age. And after that, I'm doing a MPM surface. And with that, I'm turning these kind of particles into VDB. So it has a really nice workflow for doing that. It's pretty fast and it looks good in the render as well. So this is our form. Now, what is all of this? So basically, uh, if you check the simulation, now this one is not in a right color space, but um, you see that there are some bigger kind of bubbles that will add um, really more detail to the whole effect. So for creating those, I'm basically choosing some points. So from this simulation, I'm just choosing one, two, three, four, five, like this. I'm choosing some points randomly and I'm turning those into like bigger bubbles. So basically what I'm doing here is that I'm saying um, I want three kind of points, which basically I ended up only using the mids here, uh, but I want big points, mid points and small points. So the way that I'm doing this is that I'm uh, using the ID and I'm getting a random value out of it. Now, uh, random values are from uh, zero to one. So we know that. Now, if we run this uh, random value from ID without any seed, so if you don't add up any number to it, it's gonna give us the same value for each point. So point uh, with the ID of uh, 20 would have the random value of uh, 0.5, like all the time. So with that information, I'm saying that, okay, choose only the numbers that the random value based on ID is less than uh, this number, so 0 0.05. Now, you can imagine that uh, when we have a random value from 0 to 1, if we choose only that portion of uh, 0 0.05, it will be really a small number of points, which exactly is. If we check the points with the big point uh, attribute that is on 1, it would be really a small point. So I'm going to create another delete node, call this delete big, choosing big point only. So as you can see, these are midpoints and these are big points. So big points are a lot less. Then with the same concept, I'm choosing like now the random value between 0 0.5 up until 0 0.2. So now we have like a bigger portion of uh, points. And for the small points, just those that are between 0 0.2 and one. So basically this workflow will divide uh, the points into three chunks. So really small chunks that are big and a little uh, bigger chunk that is mid and then most of the points are uh, small. I wanted to use uh, all the three uh, categories of points in the final render but it was too heavy for my PC. I didn't have uh, much time to put for the rendering of this effect. So I ended up using only the midpoints, which uh, basically we are getting those points out with a delete node and I'm uh, putting the expression on uh, at sign midpoint is on one. So we are creating this 
uh, attributes here and with these uh, conditions we are turning them either one or zero so if the condition for big point is true it's they're gonna get a one if the condition for midpoint is true they're gonna get a one so we are choosing only the points that are one with the mid uh, attribute attached to them I hope that you understand the concept and how it works. This will be really helpful for you to create um, other effects, maybe honey with some bubbles in them or um, any kind of simulation that you wanna divide points randomly into different kind of categories. Now, next thing we are going to add a peer scale to those points, which uh, this value worked well for me. And after all of that, we're gonna do the same scale from age that we did earlier for the form here too. So again, I'm uh, putting the same kind of note here and we are done. Uh, this is the whole brutal process of creating the form and we are ready for the render. Uh, don't mind these nodes. These are uh, for the BTS uh, kind of render that I wanted to get for the LinkedIn. And this is uh, this render. So I don't know if you want uh, this one as well. I'm gonna put the note here for you just in case. So we are ready for renders. Let's go to a stage tab and see what we are doing. Uh, we are bringing all the simulation data from SOPS. So I'm importing the foam here and then I'm importing the big uh, particles that we created that actually were medium, but I'm calling them big here. And then I'm bringing the sponge and I'm bringing the hand. Now all the materials are pretty simple except the sponge one. I'm gonna tell you where to find the tutorial for that. Uh, so basically for the hand, I'm just bringing the materials of it. And for the foam, I'm using a very simple uh, glass material. Uh, for the foam, I'm using a pyro shader with the fire uh, enabled because I wanted to have some sort of uh, emission to the foam because it was uh, too dark and shady. And for the lighting, I'm just doing some uh, area lights around the hand and uh, one dome light, which I'm gonna put the uh, HDR map for you. Now, uh, let's get back and see how I made this sponge material. Now, this is too much work, which I actually got from this really great tutorial uh, from Node Connector channel on how to create a sponge texture in Copernicus. So I don't wanna uh, steal their content, so go and watch their video, the link in the description. Uh, it's really easy and well explained, so you would be able to create the uh, material for yourself. But I did some uh, tweaks to get this result, which you would be able to find in the Copernicus file here. Uh, but I really recommend you to go and check this tutorial because uh, you would have uh, like the full control and you would know what is where and how you could tweak your uh, sponge texture. And yeah, after uh, everything is done, I'm actually doing the comp inside Houdini for the first time. So if you go to composite uh, view, you can uh, loading the uh, render file. Now you can see just a bit of that scale from age is happening here. So here I'm just doing a very simple kind of compositing. I'm just adding a background for uh, the hand. And this is the final result of our comp. And then I'm exporting this out. I also did the same thing for the BTS uh, render. So I'm gonna leave the uh, comp Copernicus here in the file as well. In case you are uh, wondering what are these. So basically before I add the background to the render, I'm doing this blend. On uh, soft light, I'm uh, putting the background over the render itself. So it would get some kind of background color onto the render. So here you can see the difference. And if I show you the final result and bypass these two nodes, you see this trick will uh, put the hand uh, really in that area. It's like they are getting some sort of color from background. And yeah, I think that's it. This is our uh, final destination for this tutorial. I hope that you found it useful. Please consider uh, subscribing to this channel so you won't miss our every week tutorial uh, on FX tools, assets uh, for Houdini. And uh, yeah, thanks a lot for watching. See you.